Hey everybody, this is going to be a probably about an, I don't know, a quick, hopefully a quick video on density. Um, so what I do suggest is that we start getting your notebook out. We're going to jot down a few things about straight up what density is, uh, the pictures for how particles are aligned in general for solids, liquids, and gases, and how that affects something's density. And then we're going to look at some of the math, all right? So if you worked ahead and did some of the math on the assignments or on the assignment already, that's great. Um, but it would be great to check your work and make sure things look good, especially after doing some of the math um, today and writing down some of the examples. So for density, what I've got here is that density in general is just how compact something is. It's how crammed matter is in a distinct amount of space. Density increases as there's more mass in a defined amount of space. In other words, the more mass per volume, the higher density. So in general, solids, liquids, and gases have particular densities, okay? Um, the compactness of the particles depends on whether it's a solid, liquid, or a gas. So for solids, what we're seeing is that particles in a solid are super packed. They are very tightly clo uh, close together, very tightly packed. So what I want to do is draw a little picture of how it looks in general. Now, again, these particles are pretty much touching, okay? But this is just a little particle diagram. What makes a solid a solid is that it has very low energy compared to liquids and gases. And the particles are closely aligned. They're, they're very close together in a distinct structure. In liquid, so as you turn a solid into a liquid, the particles get a tiny bit further apart, but they're more freely flowing. Okay, so in general, for your liquid, they are a little bit further apart, um, but they are able to flow more easily. Okay, and then for a gas, again, this is just in general, for a gas, that's when the particles spread out the most. And so for the gas, what I'm gonna do is do that. So particles very spread out in a gas, and as they as that piece of matter, that substance loses energy, particles get closer together until they form a liquid, and they get closer together, and they form more complete structures, and they form a solid. Oh, also, I wanna show this. So this is a density column of just two things. The top is oil, and the bottom is, it looks like blood, um, but it's actually red, you know, red water. Okay. So things that are less dense tend to float on top of things that are more dense. So oil, what we can assume, what we can infer from this is that the oil is less dense than the water. The oil is not lighter than the water, okay? It's less dense. So the compactness of the oil on the particle level, it's less compact than the water is. All right, less compact things float on top of more compact things. Think about styrofoam. If you throw styrofoam into a lake, it's not gonna sink, it's gonna float because styrofoam is full of air. Styrofoam is less compact particle-wise than water is. So styrofoam floats on okay. top of water. So for density, there is an equation. You probably know it. Density equals mass over volume. You can also look at it as D equals M over V, the DMV. No one likes going to the DMV, but everyone likes doing density, so hooray. Um, so density equals mass over volume. For the math we do this year, um, it is not always going to be solving for density. Okay, you're not always solving for this D here. Um, sometimes you'll be solving for mass, sometimes you're solving for volume. So what I like to do first, before I get into the math, solving for D is easy. You take mass, divide it by volume, <laughs> done, okay? You plug numbers into your calculator and you're good to go. But let's say you wanna solve for either mass or volume. You gotta do a little algebra, okay? Not ask, I mean, we're not asking a lot to do some very basic algebra. Literally one of the first things you do in algebra um, is you set up a little equation like this, with a little fraction, and you try to solve for the numerator and or the denominator. So let's say I want to solve for mass. So the question is, how do I get mass, in other words, the M by itself, multiplying both sides by volume? 
Okay, now what that does, again, is it cancels out the volumes on the right side, and you're left with V times density. So volume times density equals mass. Don't memorize this equation, mass equals volume times density. You don't have to, okay? Some people say, oh, I'm never gonna memorize these. Then don't, <laughs> then just solve for mass in the density equation. So now the question is, how do you get volume by itself? Well, normally here, you would have to get mass by itself. We already did that right here. So all I'm gonna do is get V by itself. So now I just divide both sides by D. And lo and behold, D on the left side cancels out. And we get volume equals mass over density. And there you go. So some people just try to randomly like multiply or divide variables to solve for mass or volume. Ah, no, you can do it. You can figure it out. You can solve for mass first by getting mass by itself, and then you can divide by density to get volume of your substance whenever you're doing the math. Cool. So what I want to do is go over two examples on your assignment. So on the density assignment, I'm gonna do number one, and I'm gonna do number three. I'm gonna go kind of fast, but again, the lovely, you know, what's beautiful about the video is that you can pause and replay something. So if I go way too fast, just replay it, and you should be fine. But again, let us know if you have questions, let your chem teacher know, no big deal. All right, so number one, the density of silver is 10.5 grams per cubic centimeter, okay? So there are a few ways that you can actually uh, mark up your work. I do say, or we do suggest doing your work on paper. And then when you're done with a certain number of questions, take a picture with your Chromebook of the actual work. All right. And then you should be fine. Insert it on the document and we see your work. But we do need the work and also the answer, not just the answer. The answer doesn't mean anything without the work. Okay. Because we give you the answers. So if you just go down to the answers and just copy and paste number one's answer number one without the work, it doesn't mean anything. That means you're good at hitting copy and paste on the computer, but it's garbage. So the work is what matters, okay? How you get, the, you know, the process of doing, or um, process of getting the answer, okay? So number one, we're given the density right there. That's your D. Find the mass of silver that occupies 965 cubic centimeters of space. Well, mass is there, find the mass. So that must mean the volume is 965 oh, cubic centimeters. Oh, oh. So I'm gonna write down my equation. It's best to write down the equation. I want to rewrite my equation to solve for mass, all right? So all I do is I multiply both sides by volume and I get the mass by itself. And all I do is I plug things in. Got the volume, got the density. So let's plug it in. So we plug it in and our answer is going to be in grams since we're looking for the mass. If you're not sure about your units, again, just watch what we've got here. Density is mass over volume. So the mass is that top unit, grams. So I'm gonna write down M equals, and my answer from my calculator, get a calculator, is 10, 1,133 grams. Sig figs. For us in honors chem, this answer is not correct yet. All right? Every single math problem you do needs to be rounded to the correct number of sig figs. Um, so you'll never have to ask, hey, Mr. Mrs. Teacher person, uh, where do I round? I'm going to say, you know what? Round to sig figs. Okay, to round to the correct number of sig figs, all you have to do is look at the measurements given in the problem. You can't be more precise than your least precise measurement. So what we have to do is we have to count how many sig figs each of our measurements has, what each one has. Whichever one has the least, that's how many sig figs you round to. 
So that's why when we talked about the other day, counting sig figs and rounding, they both go hand in hand when you do the math. So you learned how to count, you learned how to round. Now we put it all together and you round your answer to the correct number of sig figs based on how many of these have. So 965 cubic centimeters has three sig figs. There's no zero, so it makes it easy. 10.5 units of density also has three sig figs. So they both have three, which makes this one actually pretty good. You have to round this answer to three sig figs. So on the answer, or sorry, on your homework document at the way bottom, you will see the answers rounded correctly. Um, the best way to learn how to do this is to literally do it yourself. Round things, okay, get your answer before you check it at the bottom to make sure you're doing it correctly, all right? Because again, on, on quizzes, assessments, whatever, there's no answers there for you to check yourself, all right? So get good at the rounding, get good at uh, counting the sig figs and you'll be fine. So this answer is rounded to three sig figs. Well, right now I've got five. I need to round this to three. So the best answer here is going to be 10,000 100 grams. That's got three sig figs. So one, that zero, and that one. These trailing zeros don't count because there is no decimal point and they're at the end of the measurement. It's it, the zeros are trailing. Okay. And that's number one. This will happen for all the math you do for honors. Okay, whenever there's an answer, you always have to think, okay, where do I round? So you're not just like plugging numbers in your calculator and copying all the numbers down. <clears throat> nope. Round to the correct number of sig figs. Okay. So number three, I'm going to kind of fast forward a little bit and get the, um, get the work shown. <clears throat> Obviously, if you want, you can pause it, try to set this one up and see if it matches what I have um, when you're done. Okay, so if you got this far, great. I just wanna walk through my setup. Density equals mass over volume, I have in black over here. I'm gonna multiply each side by V, just like I did up here to get what mass equals. But I don't need to solve for mass for this one, I need to solve for volume, all right? But again, there's no very fast way to solve it for volume. You have to do this part first. So multiply by volume to get mass all alone, and then divide by density to get volume all alone. It's a two-step process, all right? What a lot of people do is they'll just multiply um, density and the mass and hope it gets volume. Don't hope, okay? Just It's going to work if you just manipulate the variables. Plug in the mass divided by the density, and what I get for the volume is 186,567 milliliters. Again, for the units, you can look a couple places, or I guess one place here. The density is grams per milliliter. If you look at your units here, grams over grams, it actually cancels out, and you end up with milliliters. So there you go. So the sig figs, this answer is wrong based on sig figs. So what we need to do is check the measurements that we used in the equation. You're gonna round to whichever one has the least number of sig figs. So the top one here has four sig figs. The bottom one, the density has three. You keep it as precise as humanly possible, but you can't be more precise than your least precise measurement. So we're gonna round this answer to three sig figs. And again, trailing zeros don't count if there's no decimal point. So this answer rounded to three sig figs, again, it should be in the answers at the bottom of the document, but try it yourself and practice, 187,000 milliliters. And that is perfect. Great, so that's pretty much it for density. 
give the rest of them a shot. All those answers on the bottom are correct with, um, with or without sig figs based on the class. Reach out if you have questions. Bye.